guys, welcome to my third tutorial. Now, what we're gonna cover today is basically some uh, simple and basic shading. And uh, after that, we're gonna go and have a look into uh, some rendering. Now, <clears throat> what I like to point out is basically that I uh, only use V-Ray. And uh, I haven't used Mental Ray in, I don't know, in a beer, maybe even two. And uh, <laughs> I, can, I don't really know if I can actually explain it all that well, but uh, I am gonna give you a basic uh, insight, I guess, into uh, that engine. And uh, I will actually uh, advise you to get V-Ray because uh, that's pretty much the only engine that I'll be going with. All right. Now, as you can see, I uh, modified <coughs> the motorcycle a bit. I uh, mainly added some uh, cables over here into the uh, engine blocks. Uh, one over here to the brakes, up in the front. These guys, right? One in the back, a couple of them actually. This guy over here and this guy. Where are you? Okay, this guy. I basically uh, made them using a CV curve and then extruding a cylinder all along it. All right. Uh, after that, I basically uh, modified uh, the uh, engines over here. They're still not perfect, but I guess I'll have to do. And uh, what else? All right, the uh, handlebars <coughs> over here. I basically made uh, these uh, brakes. I think. Added a few uh, buttons and doohickeys and doodads. On over here, where uh, the handlebars connect, I actually deleted that uh, little piece, I guess, and made uh, these two parts. I think it looks a lot more better than that uh, little plenty. I don't know what was, what uh, <coughs> it was, but anyway. Okay, after that. Um, little pieces like this, bolts, um, what else, yeah, I believe that's, oh yeah, a few uh, more uh, pipes added to the frame around uh, over here, okay, because, well, uh, before this tank was uh, basically floating, so, uh, yeah, that wasn't uh, really good, okay, now, uh, <coughs> If you want to use this exact model, I'm gonna upload it and uh, I'm gonna put up a link in the description below. And you can download it, open it up, and uh, work with uh, the exact object I'm uh, working with. Alright, um, yesterday I uh, went on and uh, played with it a little more and uh, made some basic shaders and uh, made some quick renders and uh, this is what I came up with alright kinda like this uh, these were made with uh, V-Ray and uh, as you can see I uh, didn't use any uh, actual textures so to speak I only used uh, colors and uh, some basic shading modifications and editing and also I made one with the mental ray, which is this one. And uh, as you can see, it's not as uh, as good. I uh, really forgot how to effectively use it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but I am gonna, as I said, I'm gonna <coughs> give a basic uh, insight into it. And if you want, you can either learn mental ray on your own and... Uh, work uh, with your own make with it, but uh, I would advise you to use V-Ray, because, well, in my opinion, it's just uh, a little faster, and uh, it's um, a little more simpler to use. Mental Ray is uh, a little bulky, and uh, the learning curve is a bit uh, fudged up, so to speak. Yeah, but anyway, we're gonna. <coughs> what we're gonna do today is basically do the exact same thing 
which we have over here, but uh, add another uh, Harley Davidson badge over here and uh, make uh, a texture for the headlight. All right. All the other bits and pieces are going to look the exactly the same, but well, more or less. <laughs> so yeah, let's get this uh, let's get this started. Okay, now uh, over here on your right, on your uh, <laughs> left, uh, you can find the hyper shade. Okay, you can also access it by going into Window, Rendering Editors, and clicking on uh, go click on hyper shade. Uh, what's what is the hyper shade? Well, this is pretty much the place where you uh, create all your materials. All right, your uh, textures respectively. Now over here on your left, you can find uh, these are basically I don't know libraries or shortcuts, so to speak, uh, to all the uh, nodes and tools and uh, DV keys and all the other uh, stuff which you can use in uh, within your shading network around over here. All right. And uh, over here, you can uh, see all of your uh, tools, uh, materials, and uh, all that uh, stuff. Okay, now uh, let's take a look at this uh, Lambert over here. Just double click it, and your attribute editor is going to pop up. You can also access it by uh, clicking this uh, little tab over here. Okay, now uh, over here, we can actually edit uh, our shader. All right. We can uh, modify our color like this, or just uh, click on uh, this little thing over here and choose whatever color we want. All right. Okay. Let's. Uh, I think that. Yeah. I think this is the default uh, one. Okay. We can also edit our uh, transparency if uh, we want uh, to make something like uh, glass or bottle or something like that. All right. Uh, ambient color, incandescence. Uh, over here in the uh, bump uh, mapping field, we can actually load the bump maps or uh, normal maps, uh, which are basically height maps. We're gonna go into them uh, on another occasion. They're not that hard to grasp. All right, your diffuse, your translucence, all of that stuff. Okay. All right. Uh, feel free to uh, play with them as much as you like. Alrighty, now uh, let's take a look at a blend. Okay, now uh, blends and fongs are used for uh, surfaces uh, which have specular highlights, like uh, this uh, glossy paint on uh, the black motorcycle over here, or uh, a bottle, or a water, or a plastic toy, or something like that. Now, the differences uh, between uh, blends and fongs are uh, within uh, their specular highlights. What I mean by that is that uh, with blends, your uh, specular highlights can uh, shear or uh, fade or I don't know uh, what. Uh, how can I explain? This? Okay, now um, oh yeah, let's uh, take this uh, tank for example. If if uh, we use you we use a blend. Our specular highlight will uh, uh, go along these uh, lines, right? Because it's like rounded, right? This way. If uh, we use a fong, our specular highlights, highlight will uh, always look round and circular, all right? It'll, it uh, it will never shear, so to speak. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at this plane over here. Now, uh, we uh, over here at the top, we basically have the same settings uh, we can find uh, within our Lambert. But if, uh, if we take a look a little ways down over here, we can find eccentricity, all uh, these guys over here. Now, <coughs> what eccentricity does is basically focus your uh, specular uh, highlight on your surface. For example, uh, if uh, we want really uh, crisp and uh, exact reflections, no blurriness or something like that, say for a window, um, we gotta use something like uh, 0 0.010 or uh, 0 0.030, a value between those uh, two. And uh, we're gonna get some really cool and exact, exact uh, reflections. 
Um, now, speaker of roll-off, uh, this uh, thing over here dictates the amount of uh, specular highlight which we have on uh, our surface, depending on the specular color. All right. So uh, these two, these two guys uh, work uh, in a team, I guess, <laughs> for the lack of a better word. And uh, reflectivity, well, uh, this is pretty much self-explanatory. No reflections or maximum reflections. And uh, over here in the reflected color we can uh, edit our uh, tint, I guess, for our, for our reflections. Uh, black means uh, normal reflections and uh, white it'll be a little... Uh, I don't know, if uh, you'd point a flashlight at a window or something. <laughs> something like that. You'll come up with something like that. Um, Alright. So, uh, <coughs> let's uh, get this started and uh, create our first shader. Let's go for our uh, tires, alright? Let's uh, go for, uh, move this up a bit, alright, you open this, delete this guy, um, okay, uh, the uh, Lambert one, uh, you'll always uh, gonna find uh, this uh, shader over here. It's basically the default shader which is created uh, when you open and start a new project in Maya or a new scene or whatever. Okay, let's uh, start with the... Uh, actually no, let's start with the uh, Lambert. Where are you? Okay, Lambert. Okay, let's uh, name uh, this tires. Alright. And let's uh, put a blackish uh, color. Something like... Uh, this, I guess, something along these lines. Now, uh, in the uh, work area over here, you move uh, pretty much as you move in your viewport or your uh, hypergraph, which we talked in our uh, first tutorial. Okay, now, uh, since we got this uh, shader pretty much done, we don't uh, need to actually do anything more to it. We can, uh, we just have to uh, select our objects, like the tire over here. And the tire over here. Oh, yeah, before I forget, I uh, separated uh, the metal part from the tire. Alright, how uh, did I do that? Well, simply I just selected uh, the entire setup that we have over here. Uh, went into, let's see, mesh, and uh, I think it was over here. Uh, yeah, and uh, clicked on extract. Alright. Oh, uh, no, <laughs> sorry, I uh, selected, I, I don't know what's wrong with me, uh, <laughs> I selected the uh, edge loop, alright, uh, where I wanted to actually separate uh, these two objects, and then uh, I went into mesh and uh, clicked on extract, and uh, I came up with something like this, okay, <laughs> I'm a klutz today, I guess, <laughs> okay, so, uh, if uh, we want to actually uh, apply the uh, shader, we just have to select our uh, objects which we want our shader to be applied to. Uh, right click, go all the way down to assign existing material and select tires. And there we go. Alright? Alright. Now let's go on and uh, make uh, our uh, chrome parts <coughs> which are gonna be on the pipes and uh, steering pipes over here on the uh, brakes and springs and uh, all that stuff. Uh, these, uh, the frame is uh, gonna be made uh, from uh, something a little more uh, a blackish uh, reflected uh, paint. Glossy, I guess. Okay. Uh, actually, no, let's, yeah, I'm gonna end uh, the first part over here and uh, I'll catch you guys in a second.